Hey, I hope everyone is well. Um, what I'm doing today for today's video is I'm going to be talking about AC resistance meters. Um, these can be used to get a cursory glance at a battery and kind of get an indication of how it compares with other batteries. Um, I do have three models here, all are relatively affordable on Amazon. And as well as, you know, discussing each of these meters, we're going to discuss when it's going to be useful to have one of these. Um, especially for guys building their own banks or just for people, you know, using aftermarket batteries if you want to get an idea how good it is. Um, so, without any further waiting, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the three that we're, we're working with today is the YR1035+. Plus. Um, this one is pretty common on AliExpress. You can find it for generally $30 to $40. Um, this has been one of the staples that I've used since the very beginning. Um, here's another very common one. Um, it is the RC3563. Um, it is the it is a battery tester. It's listed as battery tester. You have to be careful. There's one that looks just like this that's a DC meter and it'll kill it if you hook it up to a battery. And then the newest that I saw out there, I saw this and immediately scooped it up is the, the HRM10, Internal Resistance Tester. Um, so, just to get started, we will compare their screens. So you see this, it can barely even see that, but it does have a backlight, so it's not, it's not too bad on this one. Um, then we have this one, you can see it's much more well lit. Um, it stays lit for a little bit longer, but that's adjustable. And then, this one, you can see it has a color screen. Um, everything is really vibrant, it's crisp. Um, as far as the screens go, I would have them in this exact order. So this has a really nice screen. It's also my newest meter, I was really happy with it. Um, then this one and then this one, but screen quality really isn't something that's important. Not as important as the function that the meter served. Um, so yeah, now let's go ahead and compare them testing a, a battery cell and discuss why you'd want to do this. Really quick, they are all chargeable um, via USB-C. So each one of these has a USB-C input. You can see. This one is not USB-C, actually. This one is uh, the old school USB, as is this one. And here is the, the USB-C adapter of the HRM10. Okay, so one of the examples when one of these is really useful is if you're just buying cells and you're putting together your own battery bank, be it you're making your own busing or you are you know, using a, a prefabricated DIY kit. Um, either way, it can be beneficial if you group your cells by their internal resistance. And by that I mean they can fluctuate a bit. Um, you know, some cells fluctuate only milliohm, well, fractions of a milliohm. Others can be like a couple tenths of a milliohm. It just depends on the cell. Or if you're doing something like use headways, they can vary quite a bit. So, um, testing this one, you can see it is on. So, this one came with these probes. Um, the other two came with Kelvin clips, but these can be useful in some situations where, like, a battery terminal is difficult to actually get a clip onto. So you can see testing this, 0.35 milliohms is the, the reading we're getting on this and the voltage of 3.3246. Um, so again, with this you just push the probes down, they're kind of spring loaded. Now we're going to try the RC3563 and see the results that we get on the same battery. And again, this one can clip. So, you know, 
it can be good and bad because like on this one, you see there's not really a place to clip it to unless we go straight to the terminal, but the stud can be a point of higher resistance. So um, yeah, the, the probes definitely can be beneficial. So I'm gonna just hook this up as close to the pad as I can. You'll see this is showing an internal resistance of about 0 0.309, 0 0.313, 0 0.314. Um, it's kind of bouncing around, so sometimes when it's it's not giving you a stable reading, it can be because of contaminants on the clips themselves, or you just don't have a good connection. So let's see if we can get a, a stable reading from this. Okay, so it looks like 0 0.343, uh, 0 0.337, but it's bouncing back and forth between those. Um, that is one of the problems with these is sometimes you'll see it's kind of hard to get a really static reading from them. Um, notice it does go down a bit further than the other one. It goes down another decimal place. So 0 0.344 is about what this one's reading. 0 0.35 was the last one. So uh, pretty close to the same results. And then next, we're going to do the HRM10. And again, these are clips, so you know we don't have a, a great place to connect them. So with this, we're showing 0.44. Um, let me put the clips just to make sure. And it is pretty typical to have a variance in these meters. Um, you know, even if they're all calibrated, they, you know, it's just very difficult to get them all lined up and equal. Okay, so. Looks like 0.42. Actually, I got that clip down and yeah, about 0 0.41, 0 0.4. And notice how it's fluctuating. That in large part is because of how it's hooked up. Um, again, we're you know clipping onto the stud, but it does look like if we kind of push it to the battery terminal, we are able to get a reading of. about 0.35, bouncing 0.34. Um, so again, so all of these are giving us measurements of about the same range, assuming that we have a good connection to the pads. Um, this one's just doing it with more style. So um, all of these actually are under $50 on AliExpress. So same price range, great tool to have. And when it can also be really great is if you're assembling a battery bank, you know, if you have many of these, you should be able to measure the, you know, your resistance that the battery is positive and the negative, like on a 12 volt battery. And right away, you know, if you have 4.3 cells, you should be right around 1.2 plus your busing. So if suddenly you're getting readings of you know, like four milliohms, you know you have a connection that's poor somewhere and it can just be a great warning sign that something isn't 100% with your battery. Okay, so here we have a fully assembled bank and we're gonna go ahead and test them all again to see if the results are similar. And this one will be much easier for the other ones to test because it has a good place to clip. So I'm going to try to measure them all at the same spot, which is right around these terminals. Um, I'll do it here and here so it stays, you know, they're both connected during the video. Um, but right there and right there, right at these um, bolt holes, and it looks like we're measuring about 
8 milliohms of resistance, 0.81. Next we will test this one. And this one typically in my experience does measure just a little bit lower than the 1035. Um, so we'll go ahead and get it clipped right. Here and right. Okay. So you can see um, we're bouncing between point eight and point eight one. You can see we're at point eight oh five milliohms on this one. So pretty close to the other one. That yeah, looks like point eight one four now. Let's see. Yeah, 0 0.803, it's bouncing back and forth, 0 0.812. So, I mean, the other one gave us 0 0.81. This one's now also giving us 0 0.81, so almost dead on at the, at the lower ranges of the reading. And again, 0.81, so 0.82, but all of them are right around the same, right around the same point. So, I mean, really they're all measuring pretty close to the same. So it's largely going to be just a matter of preference, which one you like aesthetically. Um, it's worth noting that I haven't messed with it too much, but these two both do have PC apps. This one does not. Um, I also believe this one is going to be about $10 cheaper than the other ones. It does come with the probes, the other two come with the Kelvin clips. Um, the, the one that measures the, you know, to the finest detail is this one. You do get an extra digit on the resistance with this one, however, you do get an extra digit with the voltage on these two. So. Uh, you're likely not using these to test your voltage, that's not the issue, so if getting that extra decimal is what you're after, um, you're going to want this one, because this one will measure down 2.001 milliohms, so 10 microohms, and these two have one less digit, but um, all in all, if I were going to recommend someone one of these monitors, it would likely be this one, just because, I mean, it just looks the coolest, the clips are nice, um, you know, I've had better luck getting steady readings where the other ones have been bouncing around quite a bit. So, again, this is the HRM10. This is the RC3563, and this is the YR1035+. Plus. And if you search for any of those on AliExpress, they're going to come right up. You can also find them on Amazon, but they're going to uh, cost you quite a bit more. Now, it is worth noting, if you're having consistently poor readings and they're fluctuating a lot, that can be because of contaminants on the clips. Um, the best way to clean these, in my experience, and it'll solve a lot of the problems right offhand, is a little bit of lemon juice. Um, the reason I say lemon juice and not a different solvent is because it is commonly metal oxides that, you know, if you're measuring down to such a fine level of resistance, you know, a layer of metal oxide can hurt. Lemon juice will generally eat those away where alcohol will not. But then I do give it an alcohol wipe just to make sure that I'm not leaving sticky juice behind. So um, if you have these a while and you notice the readings are getting worse progressively, hit these with some pure lemon juice, clean them with some alcohol and try again and it's likely gonna solve your issue. Um, so again, it is worth noting now, uh, if you're getting these and using them to compare batteries, um, this is not the resistance that you would actually plug into Ohm's Law. This is AC resistance, which it's become a standard because it's easy to measure in the batteries, but the DC resistance, which is, you know, the resistance that actually matters for your voltage drop, um, there's no little meter like this that can figure it out. You need to shut, you have to pull some current, but 
This will give you a great baseline and a way to compare batteries against each other. Um, if you look on a manufacturer sheet, it's almost always going to have the AC resistance at one kilohertz. So you can you know, use that as a ballpark idea. At least LifePo to LifePo, you can't really compare LifePo to LTO because LTO is a 6S config where LiPo is 4S and you would multiply the resistance by four or by six respectively. So, um, you know, a great way to compare batteries, if you compare a battery and you see one battery has five milliohms of resistance on these and the other one has two, the one that has two milliohms is going to be able to provide you with more power with less voltage drop. So while you can't figure out the exact amounts using this number, you can get a ballpark of which battery is going to at least be able to burst more power. Uh, you can't really use this for sustained either because you know this has nothing to do with capacity. Um, so yeah, it's a great way to compare batteries. It's a great way to group cells under fifty dollars. And if it's you know if you're into car audio or building your own banks for any other purpose, these are a great tool to have so you can really verify what you're getting. If you have any questions, just let me know.